you've just seen a flash of orange through the leaves and branches. One's just above us in the trees up here. A golden lion, tamarind. What a creature. It's only the size of a well-fed squirrel, but with this billowy orange mane. Just as the panda has iconic status in China, so the golden lion tamarind does in Brazil. They're different from most monkeys. You know, they give birth to twins. They are living family groups, a mom and a dad, and their kids from several generations. What was the situation with the tamarinds when you first started studying? There were about only 200 in the forest. And 200? 200, and almost none in captivity. Because they were close to being wiped out? They were close to being wiped out. They were in an area that was that just got a major highway, and, and there was a lot of pressure, so they were really worried about them. These creatures have really had a roller coaster ride over a recent decade. And there was a point in the 1980s when it looked as though they might become extinct in the wild due to extremely high levels of poaching and endless habitat loss. And then there was this very successful international conservation campaign which got their numbers up to several thousand. Before recently, they were hit by another disaster. I mean, we were shocked and, and overwhelmed. We had lost about 33% of the population in a matter of months. We were facing losing 40 years of conservation. I've had the yellow fever vaccine. You've doubtless had the yellow fever vaccine. I'm slightly larger than the tamarind. Is it just a case of reducing the dose and diluting it down? Is it as straightforward as that? As straightforward as that. It worked really well. Had it ever been done before? No. Here we go. So this is the yellow fever vaccine. Yes. This is really muscular conservation. This is not standing back and saying, oh, there's nothing we can do, let's just watch as these creatures go to the edge and fall off. No, this is saying we're going to step in here and we're going to fight for them and try something and work and battle to save them. One done. Another one potentially saved. Another potentially saved. It's wise for us to prevent any creature from becoming a reservoir for yellow fever. If it can be infected, it can pass it on. Exactly. And right now, then you won. So it's just a win, 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 win. Yeah. yeah. For the animals, for us, for our species and our planet. For everybody. Brilliant. <laughs> Much of the Atlantic forest has been broken up and fragmented into smaller areas, often split by big roads. And that creates very broken habitat for the tamarinds. But Carlos and his team I've come up with a big idea to connect two separate tamarind homes together. Look at this. Bloody hell, Carlos. You've built a living bridge over the motorway. It's amazing. So we have areas where we have soil that can go down to three or four meters. So we will be able to get here trees as tall as 10 meters on the center lines. Wow and we'll join it with a corridor and the Pozo de Santa's Biological Reserve. So 6, you've got this hectares. 6,000 hectares? This forest, yeah. <gasps> and it will connect with 40,000 hectares of forest over on this side. So the tamarinds on this side can get to that side and vice versa. That's not just for food, I imagine, that's for frolicking and fornication yes, and finding mates, expanding the gene pool. But not only for the tamarinds, for all of the wildlife that lives here. I feel quite emotional hearing this. I've seen so many problems and here you've really looked after, shepherded, saved and created a future for a creature that was right on the edge of dying out. Yes, 
and hopefully this will be a, a model and it's becoming a, a, a model. You know, you have highways, you can do wildlife bridges or wildlife passages and you'll reconnect the habitat. It's just a matter of doing it. I mean, all wildlife needs a little bit of help and uh, give them the opportunity and it will bounce back.